good viewers, you are welcome to Solubu to Dust. There are uh, rules and regulations that you must follow in order for you to pass your chemistry. This video is basically for practical chemistry. What are the rules and regulations? And I'll be taking this year chemistry as an example. We look at the steps in which we mark and what are the things you are supposed to write to earn a good mark in practical chemistry. So please don't click away. Try to help people. What I need you to do is to like this video so that YouTube will show it to more people. Because the pathetic part is that less than 10% of teachers are actually marking Wayek and Neko. And these Wayek and Neko are, are the examination body. They have rules and regulations. There are ways they are expecting students to write. In fact, this year is very, very pathetic because there are a lot of ways students are writing rubbish based on ignorance. And I believe the ignorance is not only for the students, also for the teachers. Most teachers did not mark why, and these things are hidden to them. Okay? So, a lot of students from my experience from what I marked this year, I saw a lot of errors which make students to fail. And I want to address that as much as possible. So, this video must go viral, please. Let it go viral. Let a lot of people see this video. And it's going to help a lot of students. Maybe you're in secondary school, university, or you're a parent. This video will really help. Please push it out and let people see it. So let's look at the questions uh, one after the other. Question number one. The question says, all your bullet readings, initial and final, as well as the size of your pipette, must be recorded. But no account of experimental procedure is required. All calculation must be done in this booklet. Now, question number one. A is a solution of KMNO4 containing 0 0.020 moles per dm cube. That's the concentration of A there. B is a solution of FA2 plus obtained by dissolving 3.8 grams of iron granules in 250 cm cube of solution. Roman got A. Put A in the bread. Your pipette might be 20.0 cm cube or 25.0 cm cube of B into a conical flask and add 10, .10 cm cube of H2SO4. Titrate it with A. Repeat the titration to obtain concordant theta values. Tabulate your results and calculate the average volume of A used. The equation of the reaction is MNO4. You can see the equation of the reaction there. So we have to calculate. So what are we expected from the marking there? What is expected of us? Let's check it, please. The maximum marks obtainable for the alternative A total is 50 marks. So we have to answer all the questions. Question number one. How are we expected to answer it? A. Two concordant titers. We give eight marks, which means four marks for each theta value, and we are to mark two theta values, two theta values. So four four marks, addition of the four four marks, that has uh, eight. You don't just give the four marks anyhow. There are rules and regulations of how you give the four marks. It must not be too far away from the theta value of your teacher. I've made a video on that already. The rules and regulation and how the theta value is being uh, awarded and how we mark them. You can check the up here, right up, okay? Something will be pumping up. You click it so that as soon as you are through, done with this video, you can go there. If you have not watched it, I've made a video on that. So let's go on. So averaging. Averaging means your two theta values or, your, or if you are using three theta values, you add them together and you divide by P if they are P. If they are two, you divide by two. So that one will give you one mark. And the total, uh, the final value, which is evaluation, we also give one mark, making two marks with correct unit. So under the table, we have 10 marks. But under that 10 marks, there are deductible marks. And that's why I say you should click that uh, video and watch. I will put the video in the description down below of this uh, video. So you can watch after this. So B, we want to go one. Concentration of B most per DMQ because from the question we are asked to calculate to tabulate our reading. That's A. To tabulate our reading. That's the question A. So question A is about tabulation and then you put everything we need in the table. So question B, let's check it here. From your results and information provided, calculate the Roman number one concentration of B in most per DMQ. So what are we expected from the marking guide? Concentration of B most per DMQ. So we look at the equation there. The equation of reaction must be written. And from the equation of the reaction, we can see that the mole ratio of MnO4 is 1 to that of Fe2 plus, which is 5. That's ratio 1 to 5. Let's look at how we, the mark are allocated. One mark is allocated for mole ratio. 
Okay, that is N A or N one is one. M B or N two is five. That's one to five. You can see the no ratio. That's one mark. One mark is allocated to correct substitution. That is, you substitute your C A, which is the concentration of acid given in the question zero point zero two zero times volume of acid, which is B A. Volume of acid is the volume of acid you got from the table. The final answer there. So your C B is what you are calculating there. And your VB is the volume of base, which is always the volume of your pipette. Most schools always use 25.00 cm cube for the volume of their pipette. So it should be substituted there. So after doing the correct substitution, you get one mark for correct substitution over there. So now CB is equal to 0 0.020 times 5 times volume of your acid divided by 1 times volume of base. Now, making CB the subject of the formula, there's another mark. So make it three marks there. So your final answer, which must be, I've said it in one of my videos, which must be in three significant figures. And with correct unit, you say correct evaluation to three significant figures, wrong unit, no score. No unit, you can score. Okay. So if the candidate is silent on units, you might score it. But wrong unit, no score. So for that particular Roman figure, one there, every mark. All the marks, maximum mark there will be four marks. So let's go to question of Roman figure two. We have to calculate the concentration of B in grams per dm cube. The initial one we have to calculate in moles per dm cube. The second one now we have to calculate in grams per dm cube. So concentration of B in grams per dm cube. So concentration in grams per dm cube, which is equal to concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass. So there, the concentration in uh, of B in most part DMQ got it from up there, which is labeled as small letter A, will be substituted correctly. Now, for having mathematical formula, that's one mark. For writing the formula, that's one mark. Correct substitution, which will be the concentration of B, which is small letter A, times 56.0. That 56.0 is the molar mass of Ion 2, which is 56.0. That is mark for getting the molar mass. Mark for it, that's one mark. That expression, concentration, which is A times 56, is another one mark. That's correct substitution there. And evaluation, which is the final uh, result, which must also be in three significant figures. You must not forget. That would be one mark. So, total marks for Roman figure 2 over there is four marks. So, going to Roman figure 3. Well, we got three. The question says mass of Fe2 plus in 250 cm cube of B. Now you must not forget that the grams of B that you got up there, concentration of B in gram per dm cube. We say gram per dm cube. It means gram in one dm cube, and one dm cube mathematically means 1000 cm cube. So it means 1000 cm cube from the expression is 1000 cm cube of B which is equal to the concentration in grams which we got up there because we say gram per dm cube that will be one mark now we have to calculate the mass from 250 cm cube so which means for 1000 cm cube to give us what we got up there 250 cm cube of b will be b times 250 over 1000 for writing that expression we have one mark also is equal to the final answer which is labeled as c with the correct unit gram for writing that correctly, that's another one mark. So total mark in that place is three marks. So let's go to the next question, which is a uh, Roman figure four. We have to calculate the percentage of Fe2 plus in the gram. The percentage of Fe2 plus in the gram. Now, what is expected of us is this. So percentage purity is what we have to calculate. So writing the correct formula, that is percentage purity is equal to mass of Fe2 plus in the solution times 100% divided by mass of Fe in the granule. Okay, for that expression, there is one mark for that. There are two ways in which you can calculate this. What you have just gotten, which is your gram directly, you can take that and multiply by 100, you divide it by 3.8, which is the mass of the Fe given from the question. Okay, or you use your most per dm cube, which you got earlier, which is condition of per dm cube, multiplied by 100. But now, 3.8 times 4, 
must be the division. So any of the two will have one mark. Most of the students will use C times 100 over 3.8. So your final answer with the correct unit, which is percentage, we also have another one mark. So in that column, it gives us three marks. So the total marks here is 24 marks. So let's go to question number two in our alternative A. Question number two. C is a mixture of two simple inorganic salts, one of which is a sodium salt. Perform the following exercise on C. Record the observation and identify any gas or gases involved. State the conclusion you draw from the result of each test. Now, A. Put all of C into a test tube and add about 10 cm cube of distilled water and shake. What they want us to get there is whether it is soluble or not soluble or partially soluble. Okay. Peter the mixture and keep both the residue and the filtrate. That's A. So let's see the expected answer that we are to get from there. Normally we are to put so the marking guide told us that C is a mixture of Na2CO3 and PbNO3, okay, two. But we are to test for it. So test. Under A, C plus distilled water. That was the instruction. Observation that is expected. Partly dissolved to form colorless filtrates. That is one mark. If you measure that the thing dissolved, or you say it is soluble, and it has a color, you must mention that it has a colorless filtrate to score that mark there. And a white residue. You must mention that white residue to score the mark. Now, once you score the two marks in the observation, you are now eligible to score the mark for inference. If you didn't score the mark for observation, no mark for inference. So inference C is a mixture of a soluble and an insoluble salt. It means part of them are soluble and the other one are not soluble. So for that column, we have three marks for the column. So let's go to question B, Roman go one. Put about two centimeter cube of the filtrate into a boiling tube and heat strongly. Once you eat, eat strongly. What is expected? The filtrate plus strong heat. Now, colorless, odorless gas produced. You must mention the two, colorless and odorless gas, before you can score the map there. And after that, the gas is being rekindled. The gas rekindled is blown splint. The blown splint is the roof that you have fire, initially fired and you have extinguished the fire. And after distributing the fire, you have a, a charcoal that is very red. So you put it at the tip of your test tube to test as the gas is coming out. If the gas rekindled and made fire from the red charcoal, it means gas rekindled. Then the roof is got called, called a glowing splint. So there are two marks for that statement. So on the column of observation, there are three marks maximum. Now, in fairness, you are expected to say gas is oxygen. That is O2. That's one mark. From NO3 minus, that's another mark. So the total marks that we have is five marks. Let's go to another question then. Now, B Roman figure two. Put half of the residue into a test tube and add dilute HCl. Whenever you are adding acid to a solid, you are expecting the gas to come out. There are two ways in which gas can come out. Is either you add acid to a solid or residue, or a solution is being heated. In two scattered scenario, gas must come out. That's what we're expecting. Now let's look at the problem we got to the residue plus dilute HCl aqueous. We are expected to see rapid efficiency. Even if we do not mention rapid, efficiency must be mentioned to score that mark. Again, colorless, odorless gas evolve. Another mark for that. Gas turned lime water. That's the mark for that. Milky or cloudy. That's another mark. White precipitate formed. Another mark. One, two, three, four, five. We have five marks for that observation. You must get everything correct, at least to the level of getting milky, before you be able to score anything in the inference. So in the inference, gas is CO2. One mark. From CO32 minus or CO32 minus. That's another mark. Making seven marks there. So the total. Question 2, we have 15 marks. There are some questions, if you observe properly. There are some questions that no marks was allocated to. Look at question number 3. We are, we are to add about 2 cm cube of clear solution from 2 above. Add the NaOH in drops. Then in essence, there, was, there were no marks for that. 
to another another Roman Vigo 4, to another two centimeter cube of BTL solution from Roman Vigo 2. Add aqueous ammonia in drops, then in nurses. There were no marks for that also. So which means that uh, it is not every question being asked that marks were allocated to. But our own as a student is just to do the proper thing and expect if it is WIAC or NECO or your university, laboratory or anybody marking to mark appropriately. Anyone they like. But at least once you have done the correct thing, you have your mark totally. So from there, let's go to number three. The number three questions there. TDA. Measure two gases that are soluble in water. There are a lot of gases that you can measure that are soluble in water. From the marking the idea, we have, if you measure ammonia, you have to score two marks for any correct answer given. You have to give two answers. So two, two marks there. If you mention hydrogen chloride gas, that's two marks. Any other soluble gases like oxygen, chlorine, NO2, and other gases that are soluble will be marked. So maximum of four marks for that PDA over there. PDB, name two apparatus that could be used to measure 9.50 centimeter cube of the solution accurately. A lot of students are making mistakes here. A lot of students are making mistakes. If you mention pipette, pipette will not be marked. Yes, because pipette most of the time is, is fixed in the standard. It is 25 centimeter cube and it's fixed as 25 centimeter cube. Most of our pulp pipette. But if you mention graduated pipette, graduated pipette has a lot of uh, measurement graduation. So it means it can measure because they mention the amount specifically as 9.50. So you have to measure graduated papers to be marked there. Measuring cylinder can also be measured, can also be mentioned. So one mark for each of them. You can also mention any other thing. And it will be marked. Once they are, you can mention bullet. Bullet is also there. So any of them, any two. One one mark. So two times one, that's two marks over there. So let's go to C now. So if C, the question is C is what is the use of a film cardboard? In the laboratory, a lot of students also made mistakes here. Some of them are saying it, it prevents us from poisoning of gases. It's not just preventing. Okay, is it that you say to extract or to remove or to prepare? That's one mark for that. Poisonous gases, or you can mention hazardous gases. Okay. It will also be marked because poisonous and hazardous are the same. So there are two marks for C over there. So let's go to D now. D, name three personal protective equipment that are used in the laboratory. Name three personal protective equipment that are used in the laboratory. We have a lot of protective equipment. A lot. Laboratory coats, safety goggles, hand gloves, face mask. Nose mask. So if you look at it properly, uh, laboratory coats, safety goggles, hand glove, face mask, nose. You can also mention a lot. Mm -hmm. You can mention face sheet and a lot like that. So once you have mentioned what is correct, it will be correctly marked. So thank you and God bless you for watching this. Ah, this is alternative A. I also make videos on alternative B, which is very, very important for you to watch. So after this video, it will be part of the video that will be pumping up. You can click on it. Click on it just to watch the alternative B part of this chemistry. Thank you and God bless. See you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe, please, and like the video. Thank you.